Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, where we practice facts over feelings. Thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We broke through the 6,000 subscriber mark. Now we're on to 7,000. So thank you for continued support of our channel. We appreciate you. Let's jump in on the topic at hand. The topic at hand is what you see across the bottom in the ticker. Brianna Stewart's wife received death threats uh, following game one in which, coincidentally, Brianna Stewart missed a layup that would have, well, first missed a free throw that would have won the game in regulation, and two missed a layup that would have sent the game into a second overtime. The reason I bring that up is because <clears throat> there are people who are fans of sports. There are people who are crazy people. There are people who gamble on games. There are people who just don't just have a screw loose and are complete trolls. Now, the report is that Brianna Stewart's wife, Marta, um, let me give you her whole name. She's a former basketball player herself. Uh, where is her name? Uh, whatever. Uh, Mar I'm sorry. Marta Zar Zargay Casa de Mont. She went to the police station to report that she got an email that was a death threat. And this was after, um, after game one. Now, it by no means is this okay. By no means is this acceptable. And absolutely for sure, if you get a death threat, you should report it. The, the, the report says, <clears throat> the email says, I hope someone sh shoots your wife dead. F you, you D word for a uh, slur for, homo for lesbian women. I hope you both die. Among other things, police sources told, I guess this is the New York Post. Um, now, this is bad. This isn't, this is horrible. They shouldn't have to deal with this. Now, here is what comes to mind when I look at this situation. One, it's already implied who, and Brianna Stewart doesn't have to say it. Malika Andrews interviewed her on ESPN and basically implied it. Malika Andrews, who all of a sudden now Malika Andrews is the WNBA expert as well. So let's just add to the list because if as if it's not enough that ESPN has been pounding on this with the Drea, Carters, Chini, Gumakes, McNutts, Pecs of the world. Now we're going to add another reporter who is going to pound on the narrative of Caitlin Clark's fans being the racist people, the homophobes, the misogynists. By the way, folks, do you even know what mis by the way, folks, I have to wonder if women know what the word misogyny means. I, I've seen questions and on Facebook where a guy asks a, a woman, what you know what misogyny where the woman calls the man a misogynist, and the guy says, Well, what does that mean? What is a misogynist? And the girls have no idea what the word actually means. And I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but I'm convinced at this point that most people don't know what a misogynist is. So just to let you know, so I can educate you, um, it is a dislike or hatred for women. So dislike of contempt or ingrained prejudice against women. Uh, it specifically means you hate women. Now, last I checked, I would presume that women don't hate women because you are women. That that would be my guess. That's my that's my rough uh, guess is that women don't hate women. Maybe there are some women that hate women, but I would get, venture to believe that most don't hate women. That leaves men. That leaves men. So are there some men who are probably in that group of people that don't like women? I, I mean, I guess maybe if you're a homosexual male, you don't like women, and obviously I'm talking about in the sexual nature there, but. For men who are not homosexual, you are telling me that they don't like women because of what? 
per se, because they obviously have relations with women. Um, maybe they don't like certain women. Just as like the case with certain women not liking certain women. Does that make them misogynist? Because I don't like that woman over there if I'm a woman, or I don't like that woman over there? No. The word misogynist is basically you hate women. That means you hate them, you hate them all the time. You hate them all the time. Now, are there people who do? Yes, I would presume that people who are in prison for committing sexual assault are people who pro are men who probably hate women. Would you say that that's a majority of our population? Would you say that's even remotely close to being more than a fraction of a percent of our population, our male population? And I would venture to guess that's probably not the case. So when you use a word like, of course, misogyny again, which I despise as a word, because again, another one, homophobia. Phobia, a phobia where I came from, where I grew up, was a fear. It's a fear of something. Like I remember my mother, claustrophobic. She's petrified of being in tight spaces. It, it gives her anxiety. It, it gives her anxiety. So phobia is fear. Now they've adjusted the word for phobias to mean dislike. I don't like going up in tall buildings. I don't like being up high. I don't like that. No, 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 no. Phobia remains a fear. So now when you talk, some, talk about someone and say they're homophobic and they have a phobia, it means they're afraid of gay or lesbians. Fine. I guess you could also say it means you just, just dislike them. I, I mean, that's completely up to you. Now, looking at this situation, we have now been creating, not we, but the national media has allowed the WNBA players to create this narrative that the people who are doing this are Caitlin Clark fans. Except for one thing, this has been going on for quite some time. It's just that it has not been put in your face because no one's been watching the WNBA. Isn't it magically, isn't it magically amazing how... Caitlin Clark managed to play four years of college basketball, and yet you never heard of someone receiving a death threat or a uh, um, homosexual attack from Caitlin Clark fans while she was at Iowa. It's, it's remarkable. It's, it seems to be wild to me that that managed to happen, and Caitlin Clark, who has played women's basketball for most of her life, and you see girls' basketball, but as an adult, women's basketball has somehow managed to not have that ever happen. And yet in her first year in the WNBA, in which a fraction, a fraction of the people who were watching her in college are still watching her now because let's understand basic numbers and data. The women's national championship game drew over 18 million viewers. Caitlin Clark's largest viewed game by numbers was 2.5 million in game two against Connecticut in the playoffs. I don't think they had a higher number in the regular season. So 2.5 million. Now, if I'm wrong, then I mean, there's probably one game if I'm wrong. Now, so the number of viewers of Caitlin Clark which was 18 plus million in the finals, 14 and a half million in the, in the semis, 12 and a half million in the in the uh, in the lead eight, uh, eight like eight million in the sweet 16, six million in the second round. She drew over three million viewers, I believe, every single game in the NCAA tournament. Every nationally televised game she played drew in the millions in college last year. But now, all of a sudden, the small the, the group has shrunk down, and these the, these people are now attacking the Alyssa Thomases, the Dijonay Carringtons. You want to know why Alyssa Smith got attacked? Dijonay, Dijon Mustard is because your freaking girlfriend was a freaking inside trader for the Indiana Fever and sold out her team, and literally freaking folded over like a cheap suit and, and a lawn chair. So you could so you could beat her. That's why. That's why. And I'm not saying it's okay, but let's not sit here and act like what's happened with Melissa Smith has anything to do with sexuality and has more to do with her selling her team out and selling out one of her teammates, as she did every single time they played Connecticut. 
But I want to focus on a line that was said in the same report. Post reporters Joe Marino and Steve Janoski also noted that an NBA security memo, security memo, this is uh, right here. The email was sent from an internet address that has been associated with other hateful missives, including death threats, bomb threats, and more racist rhetoric. There was no indication that the person or persons behind the previous threats has been the subject of any law enforcement action. Now I ask you this. If this has been done before, according to the NBA, from this exact same email address, really? Really? Oh, I thought Caitlin Clark played in the WNBA. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the NBA has a memo which pertains to, I presume, the NBA. The WNBA, where was their memo? I'll wait. So what you have here is an email address or internet address, IP address, which means it's probably in the same, in the same computer, same computer or same email address, but definitely from the same location and has been used before in other hateful missives, death threats, bomb threats, and racist rhetoric. Hmm. I thought it was Caitlin Clark fans. Isn't that what the implication is? It's Caitlin Clark fans, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's who it is, right? That's who it is. No, what, what, what you found out here is that this is all a crock of bullshit. And I'm not saying it's a crock of bullshit in terms of the, the, the death threat received by Brianna Stewart's wife. I'm talking about the narrative that this is a Caitlin Clark fan base doing this. It's real easy for trolls to do something when you're blaming people who have nothing to do with it and you're casting this wide net to cloak everybody who is a fan of Caitlin Clark as a potential racist, misogynist, sexist, or homophobe. Yet this security memo from the NBA states that this has been going on for quite some time, which means it's been going on in the NBA from the same IP address or email address. I'd like to know how they got uh, Marta's email address, by the way. Because earlier we had the DJ Carrington one where she claims that she got an email after she eye gouged Caitlin Clark. Folks, let me know uh, why we haven't heard ever heard Caitlin Clark voice the messages that she probably gets, the emails that she probably gets. We've never heard her voice it because... She's not going to waste her time. It's very convenient that the week of the WNBA finals that this would come out and that this would be reported and become a news story. It should never happen. No one should ever have to go through that. But the fact that this became a news story at the most, it's very convenient that it's become a news story in the most watched time of the WNBA season. WNBA Finals. It's still not more watched than Caitlin Clark games, but in the WNBA Finals, this now has become a story. I wonder why that is. So people at the police station just happen to know who Marta Zarge Casa de Mont is. We just happen to know that. Really? This was leaked. This was a leaked situation to paint Caitlin Clark fans in a bad light and continue a narrative that's been pushed by multiple athletes who have a problem with Caitlin Clark and are jealous of Caitlin Clark and instead choose to blame Caitlin Clark fans for everything that happens to them. And I'm sorry, Brianna Stewart, but I disagree with your statement. I disagree with your assessment. 
Stewart, uh, um, <clears throat> with the spotlight of being in the finals and everything like that, they said it makes the most sense to file something formal. Wow. Yeah. So this has happened before, but you've never filed anything. But now that it's the finals, you you felt the need to file something. Rather than just taking it as a troll, because that's what that is. It's a troll. It's an asshole troll. And there are many of them who don't care about Caitlin Clark, who don't care about you, who don't care about Angel Reese. It's like, I, I, I mean, in fact, they probably don't care about women's basketball. They don't care about the WNBA. Trolls don't care about the players, the coaches, the teams, the league. They just see some ridiculous crap that's going on and being talked about. So guess what they'll do? I mean, you know what? I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna go be a troll and I'm gonna do be a troll. I'm gonna do troll things and send out bullshit like this. Stewart added there were some things, there were some things that ha- that other things that happened in, at the same time. What those what are those things, Brianna? Wouldn't this be the time to let everyone know what those things are? I mean, you're 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 at a time, and I'm and I'm not trying to be dismissive of what this is, but wouldn't this be the time to let people know? what those other things are? Or is that just a good soundbite to make it seem like there's something else? The threat was something that she couldn't see. Couldn't, I mean, couldn't not see. Stuart said of Zarge Casa de Mont. So the level of closeness was a little bit different. I, 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 okay. And I think that we just want to make sure, obviously myself and Marta are okay, but our kids are the ones that are the safest. Understandable completely. They have two kids that are under the age of three. Now, then it continues. We love that people are engaged in our sport, but not to the point where there's threats or harassment or homophobic comments being made. Brianna, I hate to break the, I hate to break it to you, but these aren't basketball fans. You guys have created this narrative in your brain that these are basketball fans, when in fact they're not. They're just trolls. They're just trolls. They're not basketball fans. So she, so she says, so we're just continuing to let the league know they're handling it. But also, I think for me, just continue to use this platform. Here we go. Use the platform because we're an activist. This is an activist league. This is a league on activism. This is not a league about basketball. It's a political platform, not a league of basketball. It's not a business. This is a platform. See, that's, that's the way we've lost. That's where we've lost that thing. This is not a sport. This is not a business. This is a platform. To make sure that everyone knows that it's unacceptable to bring to our sport and really into the world. Now, I want to also mention what she also said here. Where let me find this. Let me let me find this other part right here that she said because I'm looking at a couple of different stories. Um, let's see here. Now, going back, I'm sorry, going back to what Alyssa Thomas had said about Indiana Fever fans specifically, I've never been called the things that I've been called on social media, and there's no place for it. I think in my 11-year career, I've never experienced the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. Then why would you say it's the Indiana Fever fan base? See, that's where I have a problem. When, with this whole this whole narrative, it's been it's been pushed. This whole narrative is pushed to blame Indiana fans. Tell me why. This is Indiana things. Tell me why it's not trolls. Because trolls exist. And, and that's the same type of thing. It, you know, it, 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 it rises to the point of, it, it's, almost, it's almost a level of slander. Because we can't sue you, but you've implied that any one of us who cheer for Caitlin Clark are, Indi- are racist Indiana fans who are, and that's just not true. Most fans just cheer for basketball. They just go watch. They want to watch Caitlin Clark play. They like watching Caitlin Clark play. But I, the comment that I wanted to met, I, that I found, I'm sorry, was right here. It was this comment that she made in her interview with Malika Andrews, which I thought was absolutely categorically ridiculous. And let me find that comment real quick. Th- this is the comment that stood out to me from Brianna Stewart's mouth. When Andrew asked Stuart, which Andrews did nothing but lead Stuart, she was basically saying she wanted to get her answer to basically continue to continue with his narrative against Caitlin Clark and her fan base. When Andrews asked Stuart what the players say to one another in the wake of these hateful messages, Stuart said, I think that we say to one another inside of this league, it's kind of like 
Why is this happening? Because we are the most inclusive league in all of professional sports, and I can say that with confidence. Brianna, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And I say that with confidence because, no, it is not the most inclusive league in all of professional sports. In fact, it might be the most exclusive league in all of professional sports. And I say this to you because the reality is the league is 80% homosexual and you have a problem in this league with anyone who's not. Who's not. I wish what you said was true because if what you said was true was true, you wouldn't have players like Asia and Angel and Dijanay and um, I mean Cheryl's people like Cheryl Swoops and all these different individuals. Hell, I mean Asia Wilson's made it very clear that the only reason that there are white players in the league is because of white privilege. Um, she's also made it very clear that it boils her blood that Caitlin Clark gets attention. So you guys have an issue overall as a league with heterosexual white women. Not heterosexual black women, but primarily heterosexual white women. And that's a big thing. And it's very obvious because of the comments that come out of y'all mouths and the things that you have said about a heterosexual white woman who is busting your ass. Because you never had a problem with anybody else until she should, because she's busting your, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have a big problem with heterosexual white women who are, you have a problem with heterosexual white women who are better than you. And that's a problem in this league. This league is not an inviting league. In fact, it's the opposite. You've told Caitlin Clark fans to go F themselves, to leave us alone, to not watch us. We don't want you here. Why, why don't you want us here? Why don't you want people like myself here? I like basketball. I think the WNBA as a product sucks. But I think Caitlin Clark is a f fabulous, fabulous player. And I think she's mopping the floor with y'all asses. So you don't like her because of that. You don't have an inviting league. You have a league that's anti-straight woman for the most part. And someone might tell me I'm crazy. But for the most part, it's a very anti-straight woman league. It's a very activism, political platform league. It is not a welcoming league because welcoming leagues actually would have loved and embraced every second of Caitlin Clark this year. Instead, all of y'all took the opposite and went at her with vile and low-grade, low-class shit. But anyhow, folks, what do y'all think? What do y'all think about this? Naturally, I'm against people receiving threats. I don't like it. I think it's wrong. And whoever did it should be arrested. But when it comes from an email address that's known or an IP address that's known for this, this is beyond the WNBA. This is a troll. This is not something that has anything to do with Caitlin Clark, but yet you've pushed the narrative that it is. As everyone has all season. Really, Doss, love to hear what you guys say. As you know, we practice facts over feelings here. Come on now.